All right, getting started. If you haven't already gone through the intro video, there should be an introductory video. Sort of start off like a welcome video, which might cause some people to kind of skip ahead. If you skipped ahead, please go back and watch that uh, intro video because it'll explain some important things about how this course is laid out and uh, really important that you, you go through that before you start consuming the course material itself. Now with that said, um, in these first two videos I'd like love you to bear with me a little bit. There might be some material that's repeat for some of you if you've ever sat through any of my talks before. Um, there are some things that we're going to be going over as we, as we kick off the course that you may have heard before. However, I still recommend that you go through this stuff because um, within the context of this course it's going to be a little bit different and uh, I just want it fresh in everyone's minds as they go forward. Um, the fundamentals of direct to fan marketing or aka direct response marketing um, usually I say that the other way around direct response marketing aka direct fan marketing but you catch my meaning um, there, there is going to be some fundamental stuff that I really want fresh in everybody's mind so that they know what they're doing and why they're doing it as they move forward. Uh, and even more simplistically, in this video, I want to kind of give you yet another introduction to myself, who I am, because I think it's a, it's some important context as you go through this material, because I'm not just some guy teaching this stuff. I'm a musician who does this stuff, and uh, I, I, I promote my own music and you'll see me use my own sites as examples throughout this course uh, and I just kind of want to give you a little bit of background on myself as as we go through this so again I won't I won't spend too much time talking about myself I promise but um, but do me a favor and stick with me in this first video as I uh, just kind of answer the question who the heck is John Ojaka because you, you spent money with me you bought my course and you're now gonna spend time with me going through this stuff and I think it's really important that I you know address that question and um, hopefully impress upon you that you know I'm, I'm worth placing your confidence in. I suppose you wouldn't have bought the course if you didn't already believe that but I really value the fact that you have spent your hard-earned money with me and again that you're about to spend even more time with me uh, and so I kinda wanted to give you a little bit of background. So uh, in a nutshell, like most of you watching this presumably, I'm a musician. Uh, I've released albums for Interscope, Warner Brothers, and more recently Dreamy Draw Records. And if you can believe it, I was once signed to what has been said to be the biggest new artist recording contract in history. Now I always qualify that because the truth is it's not like some big book you can open up and see exactly how much money everyone's made. All I know is that's what the trade papers said at the time. That's what they tell me. It was the new, uh, biggest new artist recording contract in history. Uh, certainly um, one of the biggest at the very least and and for all I know it's been beaten since it was just a very large deal <laughs> um, and uh, subsequently I, I have appeared in or on Rolling Stone, CNN, the Los Angeles Times, Newsweek, Time Magazine, Entertainment Weekly, Us, People, the Boston Phoenix, Entertainment Tonight, Inside Edition, Access Hollywood and the list goes on and on and on but I'm not telling you all this stuff to brag or toot my own horn or anything of the kind because the reality is that I also got dropped. Uh, you know, when we head out into this uh, this wilderness that is the music industry, you know, we have dreams of becoming a rock star, uh, li living lives and leading careers that are like those rock stars that influenced us and inspired us to make music in, in the first place. Um, we think that we're going to put this stuff out, uh, play a few shows, someone's going to tell a friend who's going to tell a friend, uh, they're going to pass on our music, and we're basically going to become famous, hopefully with the help of a manager and an agent and a record label who is going to blow that up on some national level. And, um, you know, we're going to live this this charmed existence as the rock stars that we've always wanted to be. However, usually that is not the case, and even most of those who do get a chance to taste that uh, usually fall from that from that machine and and get dropped. Um, I can't tell you how many artists, how many friends of mine have sold hundreds of thousands of albums only to uh, find themselves dropped when they put out a record that didn't quite sell a few hundred thousand copies and it was no longer worth the label's time and energy to invest in um, their their careers and uh, my story wasn't wasn't too different. I put out an album. I didn't sell enough copies. I got dropped. Uh, I got re-signed actually to Universal. I don't even mention that in my, my spiel because it starts to sound ridiculous <laughs> with all these record deals. But I got signed to Universal. There was some shifting around over there. Got dropped before the uh, record even came out. 
I then got signed to a Warner Brothers sub. The Warner Brothers put out the record. Uh, it was just a one-off. There was no real fanfare. And they didn't do anything to promote it. Either did I, because I didn't know anything about marketing at the time. And uh, then I was later signed to an independent label who I thought uh, would would finally care more than the labels. And um, I'd, I'd actually start to get some traction. And they did care more, but they knew even less about marketing uh, than the major labels do. And, uh, you know, one more time, didn't see any make uh, you know see any impressive sales, and I was back to the drawing board, and and it sucked, and I kind of thought my career was probably over. You know, as big as those advances were with the initial deal and the the publishing deal that went along with it, um, you know, a couple million dollars just doesn't quite last as long as you you think that it should. You take um, taxes and. Uh, managers fees and business managers fees and lawyers fees and all of that stuff you know we're still dealing with a lot of money but spread that out over a decade and it starts to um, dwindle away and I realized that uh, with my prospects not looking so hot in the music industry I was uh, and the money that I had in the bank looking like it was not going to last forever I was probably going to need to start thinking about I don't know, God, dare, dare I say it, get, to, uh, start thinking about getting a job. And I did not want to do that with everything that I had in me. Um, it sounded absolutely horrible to go from thinking that I was going to be the next big rock star um, out there to, to going and working, what, waiting tables? I had absolutely no skills uh, whatsoever. Didn't go to college. Uh, didn't know how to do anything but make music. And uh, I, I had been tooling around with... The MySpace adders, if depending on your age, you might remember those. MySpace, obviously, just a few years back, was the big social media site on the planet, and everyone, every musician I knew, was using these My, this MySpace software to go and basically spam a whole bunch of people. Um, and uh, it was not effective at all, at least in my case. It got traffic; I would get clicks, but nobody bought anything as a result. But while I was out there in these forums learning, you know, uh, how to fix various problems that would arise, uh, I started seeing all these other people that were using these bots to actually sell stuff, ringtones and weight loss products and all kinds of pretty boring things. But I realized, you know, somebody's making money with this stuff. Uh, and the whole concept of online marketing and internet business, it, it didn't, I did not know how people were using the internet to make money, but I knew people were doing it. So I saw one of these courses out there with a flashy red headline probably not unlike you know the ones you see on my sites promising that they would teach me how to make a million dollars in my sleep or whatever other crazy promise the headline was making and I bit I bought the course uh, again desperately trying to avoid the day job I bought the course and started implementing the strategy in the course I followed all the steps set up a campaign this is a pay-per-click advertising strategy that's not even viable anymore because things have changed um, in the PPC world but uh, I followed the steps and lo and behold I, I set everything up went to sleep woke up the next morning and I had made a sale I spent ten dollars in advertising and I sold a twenty dollar info product it was a cookbook believe it or not and uh, I had sold one and I, I got the bug I realized that wow people are actually making money on the internet this isn't all just a big scam people buy this stuff and I knew if I could sell one thing I could sell a million things and I spent the, probably the next year um, just consuming everything that I could uh, I'm not kidding I probably watched slash listened to slash you know consumed in one way or another probably 500 to a thousand courses or webinars or books or you know video presentation whatever you want to call it just lessons on marketing and I became an absolutely addicted student of marketing and became pretty darn good at it um, you know the, that first sale was not followed by the way by a flood of additional sales right away but um, I did slowly start to see more and more sales and those numbers built and built and uh, it, it took some time before I could cross that threshold of some money into real money you know probably making just a few hundred dollars a month for quite a long time and then finally the persistence paid off I, I got maybe lucky uh, found a great product set up the right site and really started to see some real money in fact over the last four and a half years or so I've been able to generate over two million dollars in sales um, 
for my online business. I've, I've got several online businesses, um, and uh, most have absolutely nothing to do with music. Uh, music Marketing Manifesto is really a, a passion project. It's something I started because I, I love doing it. But um, but yeah, over two million dollars in sales over the last few years. And once my finances were in order, I began applying my newfound online marketing skills to my music career and. Lo and behold, I started seeing results. Um, and as you can imagine, with these things, you know, you enjoy doing it. You tell your friends, uh, and friends started coming out of the woodworks. I started helping various friends with their music campaigns, and I actually helped one friend. Uh, I set up all all of the marketing, handled the campaign completely, and I helped debut artist Billy Burke set the all-time single-day sales record over at CD Baby. He even held the number one spot on CD Baby uh, for several weeks and, and then eventually broke into the Billboard charts as a result of everything we did. And that entire campaign, by the way, cost us next to nothing. I, th I think we spent $400 in advertising on that, and that was probably the least effective part of the campaign. Um, and long story short, uh, fast forward a few years in a career as a music marketing consultant was born. I eventually started musicmarketingmanifesto.com, which you're no doubt familiar with or you wouldn't be watching this, uh, where I started sharing this this experience with others. I put out um, uh, several, uh, what's the word, incarnations, incantation? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Uh, several versions of, of my course. Initially, it was a little uh, ebook, um, and then I updated it and added quite a bit of content and put out Music Marketing Manifesto 2.0 um, and thought that it was time that I take things to the next level because the internet is always changing and I'm getting better at this stuff all the time, frankly. And so I thought that it was time that completely revamp everything and create Music Marketing Manifesto 3.0, which is what you're watching now. And um, again, you know, that's kind of my story. I think it gives a lot of what you're going to be learning some context and some relevance. Um, but I, you know, I just wanted to chat with you guys a little bit about this process bef before we really go into the nuts and bolts of it uh, and again tell you sort of my experience with it all because it has truly been life changing. To me, marketing is power and um, as an artist, no one has <laughs> less power than the traditional artist. You're completely vulnerable. You Traditionally, anyway, you need to rely on record labels and um, managers and lawyers and booking agents and um, all all of these distribution channels that have traditionally been controlled by big business in one way shape or form and the internet thankfully has changed that and and some marketing strategies that have actually been around um, you know obviously in different ways because the internet's not been around all that long but um, the, the principles behind what's known as direct response marketing um, AKA it's direct to fan marketing there. I got that in the right order there. Uh, it's, it's catching on uh, out there in artistic circles being called direct to fan marketing. But the principles of direct response marketing have been around for well over 100 years, which we're going to be talking about in the next video. Um, and I have found that when applied to music, they work quite well. Uh, there are some slight nuances to selling music that do differ uh, from selling traditional products however the fundamentals are, are, are very well established and and as I say I really think learning this stuff has been life-changing because I am no longer um, vulnerable I no longer need to sit around waiting for somebody else to um, make my career happen and uh, and that has meant the world to me and um, I'm completely sincere in sharing this stuff with you guys. I know that there are a lot of businesses out there like mine, you know, people teaching you, um, they're charging you to teach them how to make money off of your music and I, I can't lie and say that this isn't a business. It is and profit is part of the equation but uh, for what it's worth I, I, I do this stuff daily. It really does work. Nothing is a sure thing. There are risks involved with everything and we all have different skill sets. Some of us are going to be better than others but fundamentally this can work for anyone um, and even when it doesn't work tremendously well it still is it's, it is still effective. In other words some people are going to have results that are through the roof. Some are, are, are going to have some that are just okay but it will progress your career. You will see your fan base grow. You will see sales come in if you follow the steps that I'm going to be teaching you. Um, and again, I don't know about you, but to me, what's been important 
in my career is it's of course it's fame and money and all these things that we all want as artists um, that's what we're after uh, and, and this stuff can get you there but more importantly I think it's just about being relevant it's about having a pipeline it's about having a tribe an audience that is out there holding their hands in the air saying yes I want the art that you make I want the music that, that you're creating uh, and just give me a link and I'll buy it and that you know that's that is not only possible but can be achieved on a on a fairly predictable you know I you can't call anything a sure thing because it's not true of life and because I'd probably be illegal to make guarantees along those lines but again it, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna necessarily encounter some stumbling blocks and have to go back and tweak and change until you get it right but but this strategy can be used to to be successful for anyone uh, and again when I started learning all this stuff I knew nothing about computers about anything I could send an email and that was about as tech savvy as I was so not to fear if you're not overwhelmingly tech savvy I can't promise you you're never gonna get a headache <laughs> along the way it might happen but the good news is is that once you overcome uh, that stuff once you've got the system in place it more or less ticks along all on its own you wanna um, occasionally be updating things you wanna be creating new content to keep things fresh and you wanna be taking care of your fans that's very crucial but the 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 headache stuff goes away pretty quickly once you've got everything in place and you've got traffic coming in and you've, you've done a little testing to make sure it's all converting at the rate that it should be. Um, so I don't want to run on too long in what's not a tactical video but I did want to I don't know like I say reach out to you personally and hopefully help you get a better sense of who I am and what I'm going to be teaching you because it's not BS and it's not hype trust me I've gone through a lot of courses that are and I know the psychology of these of people in the info get uh, info business they're publishers and again I'm no saint I, I'm a publisher too um, and some people really believe in what they're doing other people put strategies together that they can justify charging a price for and that's not just what music marketing manifesto is this is a strategy that I wholeheartedly believe in and um, you know for anyone who's wondered about my motivations I, I worked really hard as an artist to build a career that uh, you know you can Google <laughs> that's out there you know I've, I've, I have released records I have some small legacy you know that I'm at least very proud of and I wouldn't put my name on this stuff I I didn't set out to become the guy who you know the info business guy who's teaching musicians how to um, make money online that was not my big motivation uh, in doing this it was it was uh, honestly something that I enjoyed doing and thought hey you know uh, as I expand into other businesses why don't I do something that I really care about and which I feel will really uh, benefit my community so that's what this is that's who I am and, and, and I wanted to say all that as we go forward so I'm gonna sign off for this video and in the next video I'm gonna give you a complete breakdown of the process so you have a mental overview a map so to speak as uh, I walk you through the steps so you know why you're doing what you're doing uh, as we go through this course thanks very much for watching see you in the next video